Act. Hello, hello, and welcome to another action. episode of the fuck. Nice. You want to say action one more time? Third time's charm. Three, two, one, action. Hello, Go. and welcome to another episode <laughs> of the <laughs> Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. Some folks call me a true American classic. With me, as always, the pride <laughs> of Canada, Andrew Panton, and Gavin. <laughs> Hello, everybody. British classic. They call you what? <laughs> An American classic. You had to be there. Oh. Watch the bonus episode of Immortality on first, and you will get that reference. We uh, oh. we we wrapped up recording that episode about three minutes before we started recording this podcast, and uh, just carrying over. What did that homeless guy in the alley call you? I he told me I was what's wrong with Austin. <laughs> Apparently, what's wrong with Austin is being a true American classic, because that's what I've been called. I think a lot of different people call you different things. Did you consider naming Anma what's wrong with Austin? Oh. What a great title. <laughs> what's wrong with Austin? It's just a picture of me and Gus. Yes. These guys. Uh, hey, uh, how's, everybody go- how's everybody doing? I, Gavin, it's weird. I feel like I've been hanging out with Eric and uh, Andrew for quite a bit now. But I haven't really seen or talked to you in like two weeks. How have you been? I've missed you. I've been good. I've been waiting to talk to all you guys. So what, what have you been? Uh, you just been playing games and that? Uh, well, I went. I was out of town for. <laughs> what a while. do you mean? <laughs> You've just been playing. He got married and then he went on a honeymoon. What are you talking about? No, I'm talking you about all the there. time you guys have been spent together that I wasn't invited to. Oh, we were recording podcasts. <laughs> okay. I mean, I recorded Anma with Eric on Monday. And then I talk to Eric all the time, you know, because we're always talking about work stuff. And then I've and then we recorded that whole immortality video, like literally right before we did this. So I just I just they're very fr- they're very top of mind. I've been hanging out with them all day, it feels like. And I just have missed you terribly. There's something I've been wanting to tell you since I last saw you. And I haven't had oh, the opportunity same. to tell you. And so uh, uh, I'm just happy to finally be even though we're not physically in front of each other, because I want to tell you, Gavin, I love you so goddamn much and the <laughs> things that you said in your speech uh touched me to my core oh it was very short but no it was very impactful i think your wedding was the best wedding i've ever been to how many weddings are we talking about oh like uh, oh i've probably done eight hell yeah dude first <laughs> out of eight hell I yeah mean, that's, that's high lo- for weddings really i feel like that's low for weddings Oh. Yeah, but Gavin's a quality individual who oh, only goes true. to quality weddings. Well, yeah, I like to really not go to them. So that, I think oh, eight is quite high for got me. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Uh, I <laughs> thought your speech was fantastic. Oh, uh, I thought the short and sweet, the short and sweet route was really nice. And uh, it was very heartfelt. And uh, I thought you and Millie both did really great jobs at, uh, delivering your speech. We were, uh, we sat at the same table and we were freaking out before the speeches so we, we compared speech lengths and uh i was very happy that ours were of similar length because i didn't <laughs> oh. i didn't want to be the shortest one but i felt like uh-huh. if someone else was as short as mine then yeah that's sort of the vibe of the night i did something very similar emily and i wrote our own vows you know and so i made her write her vows first and then when she was happy with them i made her give me a word count so that i could then match my <laughs> words oh my god <laughs> I just didn't want to have less words than her. I didn't want to deliver like a 200 word thing and then have hers be like 800 words. And then I look like an asshole. So her, I, when I got her word count, I was like, I'll just stay in that ballpark. Then I know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm commiserate with her level of, you know. I tried whatever. to memorize my speech. So I kept walking off on my own into the corner and pacing around. But I realized I was just looking at letters and I wasn't actually memorizing any of it. So I settled for... Um, <laughs> Oh, then I was then I brought a pen and paper to the wedding, and I was going to sneak off into a corner and write it off my phone onto paper, and I I couldn't even do that, so I ended up just reading off the notes app of my phone like a true twenty twenty three best man. Uh, it was perfect. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Can I guess how his speech went? Yeah, please go for it. So it was short but sweet. Yeah. Okay, and did he talk about it. Emily at all? Uh, it, I mean, it was a best man speech, so it was mostly about me. But he Just said nice you, things about okay. Emily. Yeah. I'm gonna guess it went something like, "Jeff Ramsey is my monster munch. He's my my Branston pickles spread. I'm the bread, and he's the spread, and we we mix and match like cheese and Branston." <laughs> Did you get a video of this? This is really good. <laughs> Who leaked my speech? When did you turn into British Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> An 
I, never. <laughs> that's really that's a the tough sound one. of British quaaludes. <laughs> what, what, should I do a different gap? <laughs> oh, I'm gone for free, and this is my breadstick. <laughs> Pickle spread, and I this think, spread to be honest, represents my friendship with when Jeffrey you do an Ramsey, <laughs> when or you do as an I impression. call him, an American classic. <laughs> when you do an impression of ever, anyone, and even an impression of no one, like if, even if you do Johnny Caviar, who doesn't actually exist, it's it's always so atrocious, and I can't figure <laughs> out why. Gavin <laughs> Free! Whoa! Bird noises! <laughs> Look, Jeff, when I'm near you, my heart beats two paces slower. You're not far off, but I just think, you know. 007! <laughs> That's what you sound like to him. Yeah. <laughs> when he hears you talk, he hears that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. It's actually a good point of what you guys sound uh, like in my head compared to what you sound like in reality. It's we're having fun in this brain. Yeah. Anytime Emily imitates me, I sound like I have fucking like eight IQ points total across <laughs> my whole body. Uh, it's always wor- it's the worst to be mocked by the people you love the most. Uh, but you <laughs> yeah, are, you, you do it constantly. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to give to get, you got to give a little to get a little. What are you talking about? I'm nice to you. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up! I was nice to you. <laughs> fuck off. I don't know why, but I was so I was so I was so feisty in that video. I just wanted to f- fuck with you the whole time. I couldn't. Figure out. <laughs> the beginning of the immortality video. At, you must demand the director's cut of our. Uh, yeah, release of- the director's cut of the mortality immortality uh, trailer. It is a, it's a thing, Gavin, they just want us to record a thing that goes at the end of episode five to say, hey, we're doing a bonus video also. And You've so I just started. five episodes of it? Dude. Well, uh, six un- now. It's unbelievable. It's <laughs> oh so my good. God. It's so good. It's unbelievable. Uh, at the end of it, the, here's a teaser. So I just started doing it and then Andrew just started yelling at us and I didn't understand why at all. There was no need to be so upset. We did a great intro and then his thing crashed and then we just did it again. <laughs> Eric said, he said what we were talking about. I was like, I think that was a pretty good recording after we finished episode six. And he goes, the first 20 minutes of that were just really mean for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, it was a fucking, it was a really beautiful speech and it was really, it warmed my heart and it was very sweet. And I wanted to say thank you because I don't remember if I got a chance to say thank you to your face at the wedding. So what better way to do it than on the internet on a podcast? (laughs) Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I was, uh, well, as you know, free, I I technically am a paid performer in my (laughs) career. Yet talking in front of people, I just can't do it. I don't know how people do that. It's not fun. I'm right there the, with you. Especially the more people who you know, it's so bad. I could, I feel like I've had less, I've freaked out less talking in front of thousands of people at RTX. But give me, you know, like 50 people who know me. Jesus. I actually thought after your best man speech, uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I actually thought after your best man speech, I should start degrading my friendships now so that I don't have to give a best man speech in the future. Like, if I start doing a little less with the people around me, maybe I'll fly a little under the radar, and then I won't have to have the pressure of what Gavin just went through. Because I did that to you, and I pulled a grenade, and I just stuck it in your pocket, and I said, you know, and I said, figure this out. And then I watched you stress through the process for months, and I felt terrible all along the way. (laughs) I actually offered, I thought at some point, like, maybe I should just offer to write it for him, and then he doesn't have to worry about it. He doesn't have to read it. But well, what was interesting you know, is that it was it was scheduled pretty deep into the wedding. It was well, the wedding was at like six, and best man speech was at nine. Yeah, there was all kinds of. Well, they had to um the f- the format had to get fucked with a little bit to make room for the drag performance because we we were on like a window, so we had to alter stuff to to fit that in. That makes sense, right? Uh, anyway, I had some observations from the wedding. Uh, I had one observation from the wedding. I, I thought like, cause you know, they say that, uh, they say that like, try to take it in cause your wedding's going to fly by. You're never going to talk to everybody you want to talk to. You're, you're, you're not even going to remember what the food tasted like. It's going to just be a blur. And so try to take stock and try to take notes and try to pay attention so that's, you know, so that you can retain some of that joy. And it was definitely the case for me. Like I felt like I barely saw Eric or Gavin 
uh, or even Millie or Emily, for that matter. I barely saw my wife the whole time. But so I took notes, and here is the sum total of my notes. Let me pull them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Wedding. Nick is a big dancer. Oh, no. <laughs> really? I heard otherwise. Dude, That's dude, interesting. Dude. Dude. No. Dude. I, I don't know. Here's the thing. I think Nick is probably a medium dancer. I think Nick's wife is a big dancer. Yes. And by virtue of Nick being a very supportive husband, Nick yes. was a big dancer. All I know is that Nick was on the dance floor the entire night. I dancing was... his ass off with the <laughs> biggest grin. I didn't know Nick could smile that much. He was in his element <laughs> dancing with his wife and having so much fun. It was, it was joyous to, to watch. It was it was really fun. I'll tell you what really helped though, Jeff, is uh the shoes that I had rent the, they were rentals with with the the suit that I had and they were really slick. So as long as I had the beat, I could just slide across the floor. <laughs> just <laughs> effortlessly. Oh man, you rented shoes for me? I appreciate yeah. that, Nick. Thank you so oh, much, man. Thank you. At one point, y'all, I walked up to Jeff uh, and he was saying, you're a big dancer, huh? And I I was just talking to him about how much I love the wedding and we appreciated everything. And it was like, you know that stage where you've had a couple of drinks and you're like, oh, I love you, man. It's good to see you. You got a great family here. And then he, he turned to me and he goes, yeah, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I don't think I saw or noticed Nick's specific dance moves, but I imagine it, like as you're talking about it now, I imagine it being very pointy, like finger pointy. Really? Mm. Did you do you whip out the the index fingers, Nick, while you're dancing, or is that just in my imagination? I think it's more fist, like kind of you know, like oh. swinging in the air. It's more sliding on the <gasps> shoes for sure. Instead. I'll say this: he's a good dancer. Like I, if there's like a if there's like a, a a like an video game version or like a whatever podcasting version of Dancing with the Stars, I would nominate Nick to be on the show. Ooh, I, Ooh. I didn't think I was a good dancer, so I appreciate the compliment for one and for two. Please don't, please don't ever put me in there. But I, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, that was my only note from the wedding. Uh, when I looked back up the next day. That was, I was it? Like, that was it. That's all I wrote down. Okay. Oh, so that's, that's great. What, that's what I remember from the wedding is that Nick was a good dancer. That's really like that whole thing about like <laughs> taking shit in. I thought I was doing that. Turns out I wasn't. I feel like Andrew has more notes from your wedding. It wasn't even that the thing. <laughs> Oh, I got a lot of notes. I do have, a, well, we'll get to them in a second. I do have one other note, and I feel like it's a little unfair to give this one. It's not from the wedding. I wrote it down the next day. There's a video going around, and I realize as I talk about it, I don't have it in front of me, so I'll have to get it to you guys. But there is a okay. short video going around of a certain producer dancing on the dance floor that has been, let me just say, has been making the rounds. Oh. It, oh. I don't under, I mean, <laughs> unless it's Gracie and she was suddenly there, it must be me, but I don't, I haven't seen the video. Oh, it's, it's you. All right. You are, <laughs> you are also quite the dancer. I feel like Gooch Pooch gets down. I love dancing and I love dancing at weddings. It's a lot of fun for the life of me. I could not get drunk at your wedding. <laughs> you, I remember you saying that you were like I'm sober I'm so I'm sober I'm stone cold Jeff I had red wine I had champagne and I had probably seven tequila sodas nothing man N <laughs> nothing I'm sorry I'm sorry to hear that uh and let me tell you something. I was also sober at the wedding. I didn't drink well, either. <laughs> well, I mean, that's great. Right, but there's a dichotomy here, and I hope you understand yeah. that. <laughs> I'll tell you what's fucking like you. I found out I was in a good place with my alcoholism because for the last four months, all of that liquor has been in my spare bedroom, just in oh, boxes. Wow. Like we had to buy it all ahead of time, and Emily got a good oh deal on God. it. And so there have Jeez. just been like cases of vodka and oh my uh, God. tequila and shit and wine and champagne in my spare bedroom and i and i didn't even think about it until just this moment i was like oh shit I, that was all that booze was in my house the whole time yeah well, you, let oh, me wow. know i hope you i hope you get rid of it yeah. i was in a different situation where i was try i was you know because my speech was coming up in 3 hours i was really pacing myself so i was having one and i was trying to you know get on the verge of tipsy but I didn't want to be drunk for the for the talking. But then as soon as the, the speech was over, I thought, you know, now's the time I hit it. And I was hammered as soon as I walked through my front door. 
I I did not get that drunk at the thing, but I was so drunk when I got home. Like it all caught up to me. (laughs) Apparently in the car on the way home. This is how drunk you were. You were drunk. You were so drunk. You agreed to get a tattoo at the wedding. We had a tattoo artist at the wedding giving tattoos. I wasn't actually that drunk for that. I couldn't believe that you were going to go through with it. You backed out very smartly, by the way. Well, I was just thinking about like, w- will I be happy to have a tiny little envelope on my ankle when I wake up? And I thought, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you said you told me in the moment when you at like, because there was about an hour there where you were gonna get the tattoo. Well, they they it's a bunch of. Uh, but you know, a bunch of terrible people signed me up to get one, and then, and then <laughs> because because there was like not enough. Yep, yeah, Eric's small wife and uh, Alyssa, <laughs> uh, and some other people were very keen on me getting it. And then they signed me up. And then not only that, because there wasn't enough time for the tattoo people to get to me, they threw in a, "Hey, this guy's the best man. You need to bump him up the queue." <laughs> <laughs> I, just I was talking about it with the, in one of the brief moments I did have with you at the wedding, and you told me, "I'm like, so why? Wh- what happened? And you decided not to get it. You backed out, and you go, uh, you go. Yeah, I was, I was standing in line. I was waiting, and I was, I was getting stressed out. And oh, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't do an impression of you like Andrew does. I, I uh, no, Andrew, that sounded stresses. like you and Twelve Little Roosters. <laughs> it's a little Australian twang to that, and uh, well, yeah, that's what that's all I got. And uh, and you go, and I just remembered, I don't have to do this. <laughs> and I was like, no, you don't have to. And you were like, so I just did it. <laughs> that was the best. You well, I like, was gonna <laughs> stressing out about it. Then you went like, oh wait, I don't have to do this. And you just walked yeah. away. Well, I was gonna get matching tattoos with uh, <laughs> with Jackie. <laughs> Not uh, my mom, Alfredo's, Jackie, but Alfredo's, yeah, Alfredo's yeah. partner. Because I thought it'd be really funny if I just had a, my first and only matching or tattoo was matching with <laughs> my friend's <laughs> partner. Uh, well, my friend too, I guess. I'm friends with Jackie, but it was just it was funny. <laughs> and then uh, she just she was very sane about it, unlike Eric's small wife and Alyssa. <laughs> I will say one of my favorite moments from the wedding, and I don't remember if we got a photo or not, but I think we should have if we didn't. I turned around and I saw Gavin and Antonio and Bernie in a corner talking trucks. And I got so fucking happy. Because <laughs> I, I don't think Gavin and Antonio had ever met yet, you know? No, I was in, so in excited person. to meet you. We, I and think we I got, got a picture of the truck crew, too. Oh, that's so cool. I got to spend like five minutes just hanging out talking trucks with y'all. And that was like the most fun. By the way, Gavin, play trucks tonight. Okay. Hey, the the thing I really liked about your wedding was uh, two uh, two things. There was a phone at the entrance where you pick it up and you leave a message mm. for uh, the bride and groom. I thought that was really nice. And I also like that you had a lot of disposable cameras everywhere to take a bunch of pictures with. I thought that was a lot of fun. Oh, oh that's going to be a mess. Speaking of that, I, uh, I just picked those photos up today from the f- little photo map. Do you oh. know how much it costs to get fucking film developed? There a were lot. twenty. There were twenty little disposable cameras, like just like the little waterproof cameras you get, like on your way to, like to the beach or whatever, and like thirty six rolls of thirty six. So twenty rolls of thirty six film, or maybe I think a, it was twelve or twenty. It was over four hundred dollars. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Oh four hundred dollars just to get a bunch of four by six prints, How and almost possible? all of them are of uh my uh, my nephew who at the end of the night picked up every camera that. That wasn't. <laughs> that still had film on it. Just took a selfie. So I paid like four hundred bucks for a lot of pictures of a six year old. <laughs> That's great. I was so sore after the wedding. You have any injuries? Yeah. What was it? Yeah, it was. Eight? I just had the. I I feel like I always sprained my wrist from glow stick sword fighting with the. Oh right, right. Yeah. The there's ring a lot bearer. of good video. There's a lot of good videos of you and the ring bearer going at it. The the, the selfie taken ring bearer. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun. So physical as well as uh, just your ego being bruised of, of caving on the tattoo. I don't think I was at a bruised ego. I just thought, I don't or, want it. Or pride. I don't know what the word is. The ego is the right word. It was just funny to see because he just like, it never crossed his mind until that moment that he didn't have to get it. Like it Why? felt he, like I could tell he thought it was an obligation that he had to go through with. And then he just had the <laughs> light bulb moment where he went like, oh, I have free will. And it was just so funny to see it happen. Were you the creative lead on the envelope? Why Why an envelope? Why was that? Uh, I just thought it was the funniest tattoo. Like, I think it's meant to be a love letter, but it just looked like a piece of mail. Like a tiny... Yeah, I immediately in my post. head, I'd go, you're, you're a, he's a big you've got mail guy. <laughs> that envelope <laughs> loves you got mail. But yeah, I mean, it was fun to fight the peer pressure of two tiny women. <laughs> Sounds fun. I had a lot of fun. I was so sad I couldn't make it 
the day of, I looked at the itinerary. So I was in an email that I could see the schedule of everything. Uh And I saw that Gavin had to do a best man speech. And that made me so happy knowing how uncomfortable he would be doing that. (laughs) And that he also had to take care of the rings for a period of time. And I was like, oh, he's going to hate that job, too. Uh That is fantastic so well, the next sure. day it's the first thing i texted gavin was how did the speech go and how miserable were you trying to make sure that these rings didn't go missing i was surprised at how early i was given the rings because oh andrew had a seat oh i had a seat that was reserved yeah just in yeah, case well i was going to be there so that everyone could strangle me to death and then i could come back but it was just <laughs> only I, I one was... of us could do it once a day <laughs> i remember how much shit i was given by andrew for forgetting to go to that dinner reservation with jeff that one time <laughs> <laughs> it's fine you know what's funny is i don't remember that <laughs> so oh. that's it well, maybe i got time. shit from eric <laughs> <laughs> oh that was definitely me yeah 100% oh, yeah. okay Still, oh man, you had a seat. <clears throat> I had well, yeah, there's a seat. I didn't know, I Andrew. Didn't seat. There will always be a seat for you at whatever table I'm at. I also, I feel like, was there any feeling that I could have been there? I feel like that could be a move. I could show up. I, I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised. I wouldn't have been surprised. I also wouldn't have been surprised to get a call from your mom on the wedding day and said, hey, Andrew just wanted me to let you know that he never existed and he was all made up in a figment of your imagination. You know, like, I, I wouldn't, there'd be no surprises with you. Have we ever had proof that Andrew isn't his mom? What? I mean, what? if we, uh, we've met him in person. That's true. Y- yeah. You went to pinballs with him, even though you don't remember. <laughs> well, he doesn't remember. <laughs> but I'm I'm more confused by the phrasing of the question. Are you asking if I'm my own mom? Like, am I? <laughs> is this like a Mrs. Doubtfire that you're asking? That like anything related to my mom is actually just me? Dude, yeah, like you know your mom. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you're her, but you were never good, born. Good relationship. Okay. That's that's my theory. I don't understand your theory, even after you explained that's right. it. But that's I fine. was. I was friends with a kid in high school. I don't remember his name now, but I was friends with a kid in high school who I still to this day think might have killed his parents and had just been living in the house what? with his dead parents the whole time and, pre- the and pretending what? that they were alive. What? Yeah. What? He was a weird guy and he would never let me into his house. And I never, I saw his dad once when he first moved into town and then never again. And it was always, he was always like, filling in for his parents in certain way it was weird i think i think he might have killed or eaten his parents and oh and and kept them in in the maybe in like the bathroom and just lived as if they were alive could you have possibly just stayed at his house and see if any of the cars moved around and stuff i should have i should have been more uh inquisitive at the time I, at the time i remember thinking like i like this guy and i like hanging out with him but i should not be alone with him at, at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a question about the wedding, Jeff. I'm looking at my notes. I remember this. Uh, my, yeah, I uh, uh, fire of- away. I don't have anything else about the wedding, by the way. I do have like one or two uh, honeymoon stories I'd like to share with you guys, but anything okay. you got to... Uh, uh, I'm ready to move on from the wedding unless anybody wants to talk about it. Yeah, I'm this happy is to a talk brief about it, so. wedding question. Were you able to, to like get Gavin to do the best man speech by telling him that he would get the sip out of the f- face curly straw if he did it as an incentive like his parents? <laughs> yes. I, I do you... now have that straw. <laughs> have you tried to use it? Oh my not, god. Not yet. It is. Oh my god. It is so. So we have. We, we made the curly straw that Gavin wanted. That is the name of our show. Uh, with like things for the, for the dashes. It is the worst straw I've ever tried to use. <laughs> it is terrible. It yeah. takes so much suction. I uh, tried to to drink a soda out of it. I think because of the bubbles made it even harder. It is a monster. If you're somebody who like powers through drinks, I would actually recommend it. It forces you to slow down. You cannot (laughs) chug with this straw. Should we have a race through the straw, do you think? I would love to have a straw race. I I think this is it's such a good idea. Somebody's going to pass out. Oh, yeah, we should. <laughs> we'll be, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll put some pillows race? down on the ground. Yeah, we should all plop a. Well, next office day, we'll all plop down a full gurpler and a uh, first that's one ins- to empty it through that's the straw. That's insane. Eric, what, do you what mean? if. That would be what if, so crazy. What if for safety we all wear football helmets while we do it? So if okay, we pass right? <laughs> now, as long as you're wearing something, it doesn't have to be football, it could be any kind of helmet that you feel comfortable with. Okay. That, uh, that you feel confident that when you are about 
a third of the way through the Gerpler and you are start your vision starting to kind of vignette and like you see like the black kind of coming in from mm. either side and you're about to take a header, as long as you're comfortable in that helmet, then I think we're good. <laughs> I'm down. I'm telling you, we need those old people hip airbags. <laughs> oh, do. I forgot about the hip I airbags. I forgot about the hip airbags. Okay. Yeah, okay. Get, get four of those. Or uh, is Gracie doing it? Gracie, are you going to pass out with us? Gracie said yes. Gracie said she's going to pass out with us, and she will get us some old person hip airbags. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Is that something from the podcast or from a, vi a video game? From video? the podcast. It was it's something from the we podcast, talked about yeah. a long time ago. When did we talk about hip? Oh, yeah. my God. Episode like 100 episodes ago? Yeah, episode oh, 80, okay. maybe? Yeah, yeah, they just detect, uh, they detect a fall and blow out an airbag yeah. before you hit the ground. I... I I was at the office a couple of weeks ago and I saw Gracie doing something weird. What does that mean? <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> well, what did, what did she, she do? It probably wasn't like this, but this is what it looked like. Uh, Gracie was stuffing some cardboard into the recycling bin, but it has like a oh. very thin <laughs> slot. So she was stuffing it down, uh -huh. but I, I don't think it fit. So she then lifted the lid off. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what I assumed was a measure so she could just shove the cardboard under the lid and be done with it. Yeah, right. But that then she just continued to push <laughs> the what? cardboard through the lid, but in while it was in her hand. <laughs> Gracie, please. I was in too deep once I changed my mind. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you were too in too deep? <laughs> if there was ever a moment that is like, you're perfect for being part of the show, it was that. What does that fucking mean? I'm in too deep for recycling. That's something Andrew would say. Yeah, that is absolutely something I would say. That's ridiculous. Oh my God. What the oh, fuck? Man. Yeah, that's, that's that was all, weird, Gavin. You're right. That's, that's all that we get out of that. All right. Well, hey, did the task get accomplished, though? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Confidence, yes. <laughs> the same thing happened, but a foot above the bin instead of just through the bin. I didn't think that would stick with you. No, I, I, I think it would. That's a strange sight. Yeah. That was yeah. memorable. <laughs> There's something special about being called weird by a pubeless dude in a bathtub. Like that's such a strange. <laughs> I'm not. I'm no authority on calling anyone else weird. So, Andrew, you've gone hard in there with Gracie's a weirdo? Uh, no, I think that was a moment of weirdness. I don't think okay. there's enough earned for weirdo status. Uh, okay. Eric says she's weird. You haven't heard Gracie on Face Jam. It's oh, like yeah. the way Nick is on Face Jam and how he's here. He's like a regulation guy or whatever. And I feel like Gracie's pretty regulation here as well. Pretty straightforward. Um on Face Jam, they're like the same person. They're like little gremlins, like little freaks for this stuff. <laughs> Can't put us around. Oh. <laughs> Man, speaking of being gremlins, so I to circle back to the wedding just for one minute, mm -hmm. uh, we did have the night before wedding, we had the uh, the rehearsal dinner, which is the way you're supposed to do it is you go and you have a rehearsal with like the best man. And, and uh, <laughs> that was a funny fucking... <laughs> Wait, that was a dinner? <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was the rehearsal. And then right after the rehearsal, you have the rehearsal dinner, right? Which, by the way, Gavin didn't show up for the rehearsal. That was very fucking funny. So I filmed the rehearsal for him and sent it to him. And then he just walked out of the woods and he was like... <laughs> I, had, I had a bit of a bear finding the, the thing. You sent me a video. I was just outside the venue in a traffic jam. <laughs> like in no, the, it was in not your fault. It was not your fault at all. You were caught in a crazy traffic jam that I got caught in trying to leave. But it was just really funny. And I thought... Everybody's like, where the fuck is Gavin? And I thought, oh, I don't know if I ever talked to him about this. And I know he doesn't read email, so he may not know about this. <laughs> and I thought, no worries, everybody. I got it. I got it. Because I'm always like protecting my Gavin, right? So I was like, I got it. And I'll just, and I just filmed it. And I just narrated. I'm like, all right, you're going to go down here and then you're going to do this. And then you're going to walk over there. And then that's where the ring bearer is. And then I just sent him this video and I'm like, you'll need this for tomorrow. And then he just like emerged from the woods two minutes well, later. Well, I, I was looking at the video, trying to, trying to line it up with what I could see in real life. And I saw some water. <laughs> I saw like a big lake or river or something. So I was like, okay, well I can see that. And then I ended up walking all the way down to the, to the river. And I was like, I don't think they're here. Cause I was starting to walk into mud and shit. I was like, this isn't right. You're getting real life truck action and you're getting in the mud. Yeah, and it was. to fucking hitch to something to get out of it. I was like, but, Antonio. <laughs> but right after that, we went and we had the rehearsal dinner. And instead of just having, a uh, a dinner for like friends and like, like your parents and I guess the bridal party is what you would call it. 
we just invited everybody that we invited to the wedding to the rehearsal dinner, and we rented Top Notch, the hot the hamburger place, and we just had free hot hamburgers all night. I've got to say, I I might have eaten nine hamburgers that night. Oh my god, you had the confidence. <laughs> just having hamburgers available, hot and fresh at all times. Oh, it was wow. It was maybe one of the best moves of my life. Like I was in the moment thinking, like you really killed this, and then just grab some onions. <laughs> I fucking I was I was just gonna ask if you guys ate uh, a bunch of hamburgers. I did. I had a couple of hamburgers, but dude, the onion rings with Lone Star Light, and you're just mm. throwing them back was like what a combo. And then at the end, it was like, hey, there's apple pies, what? fucking awesome. They were so good. That it sounds rolled. so good. Oh, oh my all, god! And, and it's all from Top Notch, so it's like it's fucking great. It's so Ugh. good. And then yeah. I heard I heard somebody got sick, but no one else got sick. So I'm really confused. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have not heard that. But uh, I definitely ate my body weight in hamburgers and felt just fine. Anyway, I, if, if you're ever thinking about like getting married and having a rehearsal dinner, just have it at a fast food restaurant. It's the fucking way to go. It was awesome. What do you call a person who speaks three languages? Trilingual. Someone who speaks two? Bilingual. Someone who speaks one? American. Only 22% of Americans speak a language other than English at home. Start learning a new language this fall and be the exception, not the rule. Because with Babbel, you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. This fall, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. I mean, Babbel's courses are so easy and it's so convenient to learn actual, important, real-life conversation skills. Things like how to order food or ask for directions, talking to people in the community without having to consult an app while on vacation, let's say. Like, that's so annoying whenever you have to pull an app out when you're traveling somewhere. It's so much more immersive and you can tell you make a deeper connection with the person when you can speak their language. It's always so exciting when you're surprised by somebody who speaks a language that maybe you didn't anticipate. Plus, you know, hello, bonjour. You get that sound, whatever you ideally pair uh, the uh, the word or, or you pronounce it correctly. Not pair isn't the right word, but when you say a word correctly, you get that. And it's just it's fun. You get that affirmation that you're doing it correctly. And it's so simple. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash face. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash face, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash face. Rules and restrictions may apply. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And we're not talking about some absurd TikTok trend that's just complete nonsense. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and how they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic and comfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you break your habit. I didn't necessarily know what to expect when I, I saw Fume, but I was struck immediately by how just good it feels. It's weighted perfectly, and it's really genuinely fun to fidget with. It's just like a fun thing if you want to play with. It also looks 
incredibly cool. It's something that you could feel awesome using. It's not like some weird looking device. It has a really nice design to it. Something that I also wanted to say is that it just all around is a great product. So I'd, I'd recommend it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code FACE to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code FACE to save an additional 10% off your first order today. Gifting is a no-brainer this holiday season thanks to the unmatched comfort and style of MeUndies. From undies to bralettes to socks and loungewear, MeUndies has the perfect gift for yourself or anyone else on your list. Even those hard-to-gift people, MeUndies has a holiday gift guide that makes it all super easy. I am a big fan of the holiday gift guide. Any holiday gift guide. I love the holidays so much. Um, I got myself some very cute boxer briefs. It has a marshmallow and a cup with hot chocolate. They're so comfy. I love underwear. I mean, people know them. I, I like the Winnie the Pooh a lot of the time, but a lot of the times that Winnie the Poohing is I got underwear on and uh, have some great boxer briefs. It's always such a nice feeling. I love getting new underwear. It's fantastic. Uh, they have styles for everyone, from all black classics to fun expressive prints. MeUndies has a look for everyone, plus they come in sizes extra small through 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for everyone. Versatile loungewear. MeUndies isn't just about underwear. Explore the lounge collection featuring comfy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. They have unmatched comfort. MeUndies' signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal for all-day wear. And as I just said, I mean, they're breathable. MeUndies' fabrics are light and breathable to help regulate your body temperature so you can stay cool and comfy, which is so important to me. Like, that's the number one thing you want with underwear is you want to be cool, you want that comfort, and they're responsibly sourced. They use sustainably sourced materials and work with partners that care for their workers. It's a problem-free philosophy. Not happy with your first pair of undies? It's on me undies. So please, knock out your holiday shopping today and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash face. That's MeUndies.com slash face for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies. Comfort from the outside in. You didn't hear about that? No. Huh. Who got sick? Do you want to elaborate? Yeah. Well, if I threw it all up, I chucked it everywhere. Oh. You threw oh, up all the burger? Right. Yeah. You did. I did remember that. I, you did tell me that. I figured that was nerves, though. I don't know if it was. It might have been. I, I will say it definitely wasn't the food because everyone ate what you ate and literally no one else got sick. Yeah, a hundred other people were there. I was lying in bed and then I was like, Ugh, feels a bit iffy and then i got the uh sort of excess of saliva happening in my mouth and i was like oh, oh no. i'm actually gonna throw this up god damn it and then i went and <laughs> oh, i chunked for about 45 minutes and then went oh back to bed 45 minutes what? and then i realized uh last year a family member of mine got married in england and i chunked at that wedding and i think weddings make me sick i think weddings make me hurl 45 minutes well, there was there was a couple of rounds to it. You, I, I listen. We got to work on your throw up game. Uh huh. You should not be taking forty five minutes to get through that. That is a <laughs> long amount of time. Well, I'm not there, hunched over for forty five minutes. I, I'll hurl, and then I'll feel like, oh, I'm glad that's out, and then I'll go back to bed and be like, oh, there's more to come. Yeah, I'm saying you're not properly clearing the system. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. Next, when I'm there, I'm gonna teach you. It's gonna sound like an animal is getting executed, but you're gonna get all that out in like two oh, minutes. Oh, I'm actually. I can. I can throw up in complete silence. What? It just yeah, sounds see, like a, throwing a cup of water. <laughs> That's why you're throwing up for 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you're acting like you're fucking Sam Fisher with your vomit. You just need to get it out there. <laughs> I, as I said, it sounds like a series of animals are being killed, but my puke is out within 30 seconds. We should uh, we should get like one of those decibel meters and both hurl next to it. So oh, it's, uh, it, mine would oh. be so loud. Hold on, I'm, I'm such a loud puke. Decibel test. Uh, 
<laughs> we'll each do a gallon of milk. I'm lactose intolerant, so that seems unfair. Well, I think considering the, the goal is to hull. Yeah, I think it'll make your, your puke stronger. We could get Ipecac. Uh, that seems a bit risky. I mean, I think the milk is the way to go. We'll but figure out a, a non-risky way. No, it's fine. I, I'll, I'll deal with it. But yeah, you were telling us the story, weren't you, uh, a while ago about how you would be at that gym with those women and they were yes. trying to like get in yeah. on, the, on the guy and then you would just ruin the vibe yeah. by just throwing it up. Was, <laughs> I, like 20 year old me in this exercise class with like two 40 year old women that are clearly like vibing with the instructor talking about like they very they clicked. They were friends. It was very relatable. And I would just vomit every workout, especially when we would do stuff outside. And uh, I had a fear of vomiting before that, but I did it so often that uh, I got over it. Now I'm efficient. I'm a great vomiter. You it's know what, loud, dude? Though. I, I do the same thing. If I work out like at a class or something, I vomit every time. Wow. I'm right there with you, Andrew. I commiserate with you. I almost fainted on the first one because I was trying to keep the vomit in. So I almost passed out. After that, <laughs> just it's, it's, it's flying. There's no stopping it. Is it possible to hold vomit in? Like if you just grab your lips and squeeze them shut and like hold your nose, where not, does, does it come out your ears? Like what? No, it's not. I would I, not for that specifically, but I've had cases where it's like I could, but I really don't want to, and it's just like kind of trying to calm your body down. And I've had yeah. times where I've I've canceled out the puke. Wow, for sure. I anytime I feel like I'm there's a possibility I could puke, I just try to go ahead and do it and get past it immediately. Yes. I feel the exact same way. Yep. hundred percent. Cause there's like a, th on a good day and it's obviously not a good day cause you're nauseous, but like on a good day, you've got like maybe like a 25% chance of fighting that back. It's like, it, why be miserable for 30 minutes? Just go ahead and get it over with. Just move on with your life. Uh, I just feel like if there's any possibility that I won't throw up. I'll take that. Yeah. Mm. I'd rather just do it. I yeah. hate, I hate throwing up. Mm -hmm. So do I, but if, if you do it enough, it becomes nothing. Like you just, it's a process. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't agree with that. It's something every time I do it. It's traumatic oh, every time I do it. it. No, for me, it's nothing. So it doesn't I ruin just, your... I just go, <laughs> <laughs> That's me. What, is the noise involuntary for you or do you just, do you think it helps? Uh, I, it's like I'm trying to hit a high <laughs> note. Like I am throwing everything I have into getting it out as much as I can. I mean, it's I the same imagine. as like... <laughs> It's the same as like tennis players grunting when they hit the ball. Yeah, right? that's a great example of it. It is. Do you a go bright red though when you're screaming through a load of chunks? Uh, no, I don't think so. I've I've John, puked John out red row. chunks, but <laughs> John puking row, <laughs> Andre Gagasi. <laughs> <laughs> that was the quickest you've ever been. Uh, <laughs> Well, so I'm well versed in puking, okay? It's my comfortability. I can find you got things puke fast. Puns. <laughs> you got puke puns. You grew up puking with the sewing machine. You got tennis puke yeah. puns for days. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, for days. Speaking of eating and enjoying things, I wanted to make sure I touched on something within this episode, and it sounds like you have some stories, Jeff, so I'll, I'll make this brief. I was talking to Eric a while ago. We've had a video that has been pending for a very long time, I forgot it even existed. Then it kind of came back around. But we, we, or I guess you guys, filmed a fruit throwing video that Gavin had been working on. Then it vanished. It came back. It turns out the audio completely fucked on it. And that's why yeah. it has never released. It has taken so long. I didn't know this. I think it was something that, Gavin, you forgot why it didn't release. And then you looked at it again and went, oh, yeah, this is all the audio is completely fucking ruined. You tried to... Yeah, there was de there was a definite reason why I kept I kept stopping the editing process because it was just such a pain. I just could never remember why that I would open the project again and just be like, ah, yeah. yeah, it's a nightmare. Uh, but it's I mean, it's a great it's a fruit throw. It'd be awesome to have it out. We talked about it so much. So I asked Gavin if he could send me the video with all the audio pulled. Like, don't even worry about it. Let's go audio list. And he did that. He asked me a really a weird question. He said, do you want just the video or do you want the edited version? And I said, I'll take the edited version. And then I said, I didn't expect it to be 17 minutes. It's longer than I thought. And then you said, yeah, I'm getting, probably edit it down to 12. So I don't know what I got ultimately. Well, I hadn't edited any of it. So you got what I cut together for you. Okay. Well, that's fine. Because I had an idea. I okay. thought 
how could we do what, like, what would be a fun way to do this? We have fucked up audio. I haven't seen any of the video. Who do we know that is an all around expert when it comes to gardening fruit, real oh. insider analysis? I reached out to TPG. Oh, Fue Gizmo. TPG and I watched the video today and recorded our own commentary <laughs> track for the 17 minute video. We learned a lot. It was the first time I've act or interacted with TPG in any way. We had a wonderful time. Nick was there. He provided some insights <laughs> on the day of. Uh, so I don't know if I, I wanted to. I was going to show you guys the video, but I didn't think it would be 17 minutes long. Are so you fucking uh, serious. You've been busy yeah, today, we, dude. Yeah, that was that's how I spent my morning. Um, so I don't know, Nick, is it finished yet or will, will it take longer? Where are we at? I have an export of it that just finished a few minutes. Ago. Hell yeah. So you guys oh, can watch wow. it. And if you if it gets the thumbs up, we can release that. And that solves our audio problem. Getting to hear TPG takes, which absolute joy. I love TPG so much. What a care. <laughs> uh, that sounds like some fucking phenomenal regulation supplemental content. man. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. That, Andrew, That's thank a, you, thank you for for course. salvaging that. That's what an That's awesome amazing. idea. And, this, and I can I can also definitely put out the real video with real audio if people want that too. There'll okay. be another yeah. another yeah. video we tried to make that has uh, eight versions for some reason. Sure, <laughs> I'm fine with that. It just sounded like it wasn't going to come out, and if it did, like it may not have been great because it was a nightmare. So I thought I immediately my head went, why don't TPG and I just do this? So I've been quietly like thinking of this and working on it for like a week and a half, two weeks now. But we got Did it done you today. Give the same criticisms in your oh, oh TPG yeah, yeah commentary. Okay. Yeah, so I was <laughs> Andrew I was quite it. critical. I was. I don't know. I don't know where Jack is in terms of his status, but it has to be the minor leagues after that video. <laughs> I commented on it because I wanted to just preview. I wanted my reaction to be genuine for the first time seeing it with TPG. But I watched like the first minute of it, and I asked Gavin, "Does Jack ever find the zoom?" Because when you guys throw <laughs> these small pieces of fruit and then he shows the throw, but you just can't see anything because he dude, doesn't zoom in. Can I tell you something about that, dude? Yeah. He, he's he got a fucking film degree, too. What? That's insane, Jeff. Un That's insane. Unusable. That well, is a like joke of out, a university. Jeff is, a, you know, a photographer. But if you give him something to film, he will uh, give you footage of him handing the phone back to you. <laughs> And that's yeah, but that's get. like Jeff Jeffing it up. That's like yeah, part of it's, it's bit. a different level. If I did film it, it would Jack look good. is competent in every way outside of the fact that he doesn't know where the zoom is. He gives me a lot of shit for not eating the pencil yet. Jack is what fifty two hasn't discovered a zoom function. Fifty <laughs> two. <laughs> <What? laughs> At least, I mean he. Listen, he looks great. He's uh, running. He does. Jack looks really good. He looks really good for 52. I agree. He, he does. He looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. He really, I'm just, really I'm, does. I'm, He keeps talking about this pencil. The man doesn't have a Zoom fucking function to save his life, and he has a degree in cameras. It's all those. It's all those marathons he runs. They keep you young. You can be. You can be over half a century old, but if you run a, two marathons a year, you'd be in jack shape. That's great. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, he's so. He's so are we gonna? Run. Are we going to watch that after this, or is it just going to go up as a video and we can watch well, it? Well, I, I figured you guys could look at it, and then if you guys like it, give it the approval, and we can uh, release it. I don't know when this comes out. Maybe it could be like a Friday release on this. So we'll have Wednesday. Fruit Throw, yeah. the Pantone Cut, and the Free Cut. Well, sure. I think we're, we're clearly going to release it, no matter what we think about it, uh, because okay. now we've, we've promoted it. And it's also, it's you and TPG, so it's obviously, if you recorded it, it's good enough to release uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll just make sure it comes out the week that this episode comes out, which can, would be three, three, three. Can you imagine if we teased two fruit throwing videos and <laughs> didn't did not release, release it? Either oh, yeah. of them? No, that's a great point. <laughs> that would be, I mean, like, it's just, yeah, we'll just, we'll put this out. It'll come out. They'll both come out, I guess. <laughs> I mean, what, what are the podcast offers a commentary by a guy who wasn't there and another guy from the sales department. <laughs> Before, and it's commentary. It's commentary on the largely unedited version of the final. <laughs> it's video. a rough cut commentary. <laughs> it listen, it was a great time. TPG is a is a legend in countless ways. Please watch his Green Life channel. So was this the first time you spoke to him? Yes. Like audibly, yes. And I've, because I've seen you 
try and make small talk with members of the company? Was it, did it flow or was it really? Oh, no, it was great. Like, like was yeah. it Fuegismo or was it awful? No, it was Fuegismo. Yeah, absolutely Fuegismo. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Listen, I have talking about teases. I I want to say this thing, but he told us something that he wasn't sure if he was comfortable with, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind you guys knowing that he he hasn't really told anyone before. I cannot wait for this recording to end to tell you guys. And it might turn into future content oh based on God. what he said, but it is maybe the greatest fact any person has ever told me about themselves. <laughs> oh shit. Well, I can't wait it's to hear really that. Really good. Oh, dude, can I tell you guys a really brief little story? Just real fast. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just remembered. I just looking at my notes. So last night I, uh, I had my return to to trucks. I haven't played in a while, honestly, since I got back from the honeymoon, just because I've been tired. Like that fucking time change has fucked me up. It gets dark at like 5 p.m. now and I'm ready for bed at like 7. So I haven't been staying up late and doing trucks. But last night I, I hopped on and played with Anto- it was just Antonio and I and Last week or this week, I can't remember which, I released an episode of my So All Right podcast where mm-hmm. uh, for some reason, I oh, I was talking about the desert and I found an old photo. It's actually cute. It's a photo of me in the army uh, in the desert in front of some camels. And for some reason, Millie has it framed in her bedroom, which I always thought was sweet. It's like, oh, she loves me. And she keeps this old photo of me when I was like 19 years old in the army. Goofy. I was like 80% years you know, I was just like this awkward kid. And uh, and I posted that on Instagram for So All Right as the, as the cover. And Antonio last night, he goes, hey, man, I saw that photo of you in the army back in the desert. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, has anyone ever told you you, uh, you look like? And I thought, oh, here we go. I know all the people that I'm told I look like. Pee Wee Herman, fucking uh, Jacques, uh, Jean Renault, like whoever. And he goes, has anybody ever told you you look like Shane McGowan from the Pogues? Oh, no. with, with better teeth and I went no no nobody's ever told me that this is at 10 o'clock last night I got no nobody's ever told me I look like Shane McGowan with the pokes and he'd sent me some young pictures of Shane McGowan when he was uh like on stage and I do look a little bit like with the hair and stuff we kind of look similar and then we finished playing trucks and we went to I went to bed and I woke up this morning and I picked up my phone and the first alert was Shane McGowan dead he died no no he died what after? 65. Yeah, he died somewhere in the night after we talked about him. What? How fucking weird is this curse? I think the um what was the name of the woman in the uh in that Christmas song? The Pogues. Song? Leona Waddell. Nope. <laughs> I, but I think she got killed by a jet ski. Oh god. Or Leona a boat Waddell. or something. No. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? Either a boat or a, some sort of aquatic accident in it got hit in the head or something that would be I guess the that was a jet very... ski <laughs> Jesus Christ did did you mention something about Matthew Perry oh apparently we killed Matthew Perry somehow oh my we God. didn't we didn't what was that no oh. we, it was, was it like an a... immortality thing yeah did we I mention think... an immortality like Gavin oh, that was, was like it. when did you record this yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I watched that and I was wondering if you recorded it before. But yeah, you did that. We recorded it months before, but then it released like the week he died or like right before he died. Yeah. We just have to stop. I was so we, sad we about Matthew Perry. We, I still like get upset about it. We can't. Yet Keanu Reeves walks among us. Oh, <sighs> That's, I Terrible. mean, Henry Kissinger died. Did we talk about, did we talk about <laughs> Kissinger at all? You know, I don't think we have recently, <laughs> which is weird. You would have thought we would have, but uh, have we talked anyway. about Bill Maher at all? <laughs> I've tried this, Eric. I, I tried it for years with Rush Limbaugh. It didn't work. It, uh, yeah. All right, that's good to know. You can't point it at anyone. That's true. I um, I had a thing on our little food run that we're on at the moment. I I wanted to take Meg to a restaurant last night to celebrate something, and uh. She's been she's been doing some writing and she hit a milestone. So I, I made a reservation at somewhere fancy but shit. Uh the melting pot. So I so where? I you know I hit I hit this where? button. Where's I started the melting fil- pot? <laughs> there's, there's one nearby. Um I, I I went to hit this button and then I started filling out the reservation thing and I noticed it said city of interest instead of like the the actual one I want to visit. And I realized I'd missed reservations, and I hit the button above it, which was uh, own a restaurant. <laughs> 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 and then I found this thing that says, uh, for $500,000, uh, 
you can buy a melting pot. And to those who don't know, the melting pot is, for some reason, really expensive fondue, but it's actually not very good. It's okay. It's like classy shit food. That's how yeah, I that. it's, it's cool in theory. Is that a picture of a hairy ball? Yeah, I think so. Someone's yeah, wow. a testicle there. But then I thought maybe, maybe um, you know, if Unifarm fronts half a mil, we could have face fondue. We could have our own melting pot. Oh. I think it'd be a nice, a nice sort of investment for us. You think the melting pot is the investment that we should get into? Franchising a melting pot? <laughs> the place that you just said sucks. <laughs> Nick, uh, yeah, Nick said, Eric, get the card. <laughs> I just can't, I couldn't believe there was a button for it on the website. Like, surely you'd have to make a few phone calls before. <laughs> How many phone calls and then you're okay with it? Then it's no longer weird to you. What's the uh, minimum amount of phone calls required to buy a restaurant in your I head? I think buying a melting pot should be at least four phone calls. Yeah, I would hope that the first person you call just goes, you want to own a what? A melting <laughs> pot? Uh, and, then that, and then you go, yeah, I guess it's just not a... Yeah, it's not a good idea. I don't know what I was thinking. And then that would be it. So, uh, get the, get the card? So, Gavin, let me ask you yeah. this. When you were at the melting pot, did you ask to speak to the owner and ask them if they filled out the form? <laughs> Give me the ins and outs. No. <laughs> like, were you making a reservation somewhere and then you also clicked on the wrong link? Is that how you ended up here? <laughs> but what I, was, what I was fascinated by is that, A, there's a button for it. B, that it seems... I, don't, I guess I just don't have any experience buying businesses, but I feel like franchising, I thought it would be more money. But also, if, if you don't have $500,000, there's a button below it that says, do you know someone who can help you get $500,000? They must be really clamoring to get more melting pots out there. That's a fucking sketchy ass question to ask somebody this early on in the process. I, I think the $500,000 one is meant to drive away unserious offers, you know? Yeah. Uh, I understand that one, but the you're right. The other one of like, it's okay if you don't, as long as you know somebody who does. <laughs> you know that that gets a little a little kludgy. I actually think five hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money to buy a franchise. Is it? Yeah, I, I just I, don't, I have no experience with how much that would be. I think I think that it's probably two forty, and they put five hundred to make sure that you you, you know you kind of like keep like the little like the nickel and dime guys out, and they go oh, five hundred. They're like, it's only two forty. Don't worry. What amount would you be happy with if Unifarm face was uh, going to get into the melting pot game? Andrew, Sweet. what is he? What is he asking? <laughs> if he, how much money would you be prepared to spend? Yeah, well, to buy Eric, a, a you, you, by the sounds of it, by your reaction and uh, sort of grunts, I'm thinking five hundred thousand is too much. Yeah, a little bit. Little so, what, bit. what's your number? I don't want the melting pot. Why not? Yeah, but if there was one going for a grand, you would take it, surely. It's yeah, I guess, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess I'd franchise the melting pot for $1,000. <laughs> $2,500 25, $2, is probably as high. I could go to three and that's about it. Have you, uh, have you ever been to a melting pot, Eric? Yeah. Okay. I, was that the end of your line? Of no, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, me too. Yeah. No, you speak from experience. I, interrogation. I, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I haven't. I can't fun. defend I the melting I pot. I ate it at once. Thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the one I went to is closed permanently, so you know. <laughs> I guess Somebody's I can go. Gavin, how much does it cost to reopen it? <laughs> Somebody's out 500 grand in San Diego. <laughs> uh, um, Do you think it would be a worthy investment for us, though, Gavin? Like, that's why I don't understand, because you seem to hate it, but you want us to invest. You seem to I don't hate it. it. I, I like, it's fun, and it's, it's decent food, but I'm always blown away by the final bill. Is, but as as people who are going to own the franchise, maybe that's good for us. Yeah, I mean, maybe we no. should we should ask about sort of average average numbers and stuff. And think about this: you, if you are a franchise owner, or if we're franchise owners, we'll probably get a like a, a pretty sweet discount when we eat there. Ooh. Yeah. So, so if you eat, the more you the eat there, the more money you're saving. Can't we own something else? Why do we have to own a melting pot? Because a lot of other places don't put the price of owning one on the website. <laughs> you usually have to inquire about yeah. an amount. I feel yeah, like it's pretty, uh, pretty obvious, Eric. He didn't accidentally click on another company's franchise opportunity. He <laughs> now, accidentally huh? clicked on this one. <laughs> I will <laughs> say there was a thing where Quiznos was trying to get people to franchise again. This is like a few months ago. And mm. I told Gus about it. And as soon as oh, I started sweet. talking to Gus about it, he went, 
well, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And he went to the <laughs> franchising website and put in for more information, and they never got back to him. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I just applied to own a melting pot, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> what did what you did answer you to the two questions? you have the money? No. No, I said no. Oh, I meant to say yes in the other box because I know Jeff and Gavin and you, <laughs> wait, Eric. And, wait. I know. So did you people. say no to both things? <laughs> yeah, I said no to both things. <laughs> so I what? You put, so city of interest, what did you put? Uh, I put my city and then the, they force you to pick a U.S. state. So I, I picked Nanaimo, Texas. as the, uh, Okay. And, and like so the, to the question, do you have 500 grand or do you know someone? You wrote no and no. No. And I and meant to you, write no and yes. And what did you put to the question, why are you interested in owning a melting pot? Gavin said it would be a good investment. <laughs> okay. Well, yep. They I'm said sure they'll get back a... to me. We're going to be rich. <laughs> We're going to make all the money. I think <laughs> Face Fondue could do well for us. If Ooh, <laughs> maybe some BTS sauce action with the fondue, bring it back. <laughs> just brings out his old McDonald's sauce when you order it. And he goes, oh, here you go. And he just throws it really... on the table. I need something to do with my bag of old McDonald's sauce. It's it's not pleasant, and it's large. It Is takes it up a lot of space. Uh, I'm scared to look. It's well, hidden in the back of the closet. Here's what you can. Here's what we can do. Right, we can turn the melting pot into. It's almost sort of like a, a Hard Rock Cafe or a Planet Hollywood, where we can have like display cases with like the BTS. That's sauce. That's not and, making me feel good about my investment. <laughs> Those businesses you just listed. They're still kicking. Are they? Is the Hard Rock still around? I just assumed. There was, we whipped, I, we saw the nicest Hard Rock on Earth at Key West. We did, There's it's no true. way Planet Hollywood is still around. Planet Hollywood, I think, is gone. There's there no There might be one in Planet London. Planet Hollywood still exists. Yeah, there's one in London. Yeah, I think there's just one in London, and then there's like, it's the loud hotel in, in Vegas. Yeah, there's one in Vegas, yeah. Yeah. Sounds no, like it's doing pretty that. well to me. Did you see Two all of the regulation sandwiches? I did. I compiled all the photos for you that you asked for. That was some phenomenal entries. Which one of all those was, was your favorite one? I, I don't. I thought we we're just going to go through them and rank them, but we're kind of out of time. Okay. About an hour. Jeff Bye. didn't even get to talk about his honeymoon. No. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Did you guys know there was a-, a planet Hollywood bombing in 1998? Is that why <laughs> no. there's no more? Oh, my God. Ugh. There are six restaurants and five hotels operating. I am going to destroy the planet. <laughs> Hollywood, <laughs> like a villain with low lower bar of like what they're gonna do. <laughs> the one that you posted the picture of, Gavin, is also the one I thought was the the most beautiful. I I really liked the uh, the Christmas vibes in the background, the the balaclava. <laughs> we got we got yeah. some face uh, girl action, and also I liked the angle of the sandwich. A lot of them were was sort of more top down. I feel mm. like with the slightly open tilt making it more of a, like a Pac-Man stance for the sandwich. It really shows off the ingredients. Excellent lighting, and I would give that one uh, the gold medal. I totally really? agree. I find it interesting. I've been, like, I've been lusting after pictures of regulation sandwiches all week. There have been so many of them, and they all look so good. And I realized I've never eaten one. <laughs> Me neither. Wait, None what's of us have. That one? What is, what this is my pick. This is from Regular Pancakes on Reddit. Uh, they set up their <laughs> they set up their sandwich <laughs> and then teed off on it <laughs> why the bread flying is so funny they, they did that and they did this it's like That's wow that nice looks one. real like that looks oh, so these good, are good. Yeah. i haven't seen these yeah <laughs> <laughs> andrew do you know who made, who uh, took the one that i ranked gold no no i don't okay you just took the pictures I just and didn't took the okay. photos yeah that's fine Right. Yeah, mine's mine's from regular pancakes. That's my pick. They're they're my winner. They did a great. But job. we we do need to get together and make this sandwich in the dark just so we can all try it. Oh, that's right. I forgot we're <laughs> yeah, supposed to yeah. make it in the dark. <laughs> Let me write that down. Why do you why do you forget all these things, Eric? I just making it because I I remember making the sandwich, but making it in the dark was I think something that was it was like it was made in the dark, and that was a funny thing. And then we kept going on the sandwich. I forgot about making it in the dark. I'm really excited to make one finally. If it's, whether in the dark or in the light or whatever, I really want to eat one. I want to see what <laughs> yeah. our sandwich tastes like. I have so no idea. Let's get it. Let's get it on the calendar. Okay. Well, we're gonna do some. Uh, we have some stuff coming up. We're gonna have some drafts. I think that we're gonna record as of this recording. We're recording them tomorrow, so we should have some uh, 
some uh, Yule time uh, drafts coming up Hell soon. Yeah. And then uh, next week, uh, we should have some uh, Yule time wax. So very yeah. excited about yes. that. Also. Yeah, and I guess next uh, next episode, I'll tell my two my my, my uh, honeymoon stories. One yeah, of them involves wait. me uh, <laughs> really misunderstanding the assignment, and uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I really got I got the instructions wrong. Uh, so I can't wait to talk about that. But also, I have an idea for a new kind of supplemental content I want <gasps> to pitch to you guys. I don't think I've pitched it to you yet. I'm excited. Um, have Have I told you? Have we talked about the Wheel of Years? No. Um, no. Okay. I don't think so. Remind me. Remind me next episode to pitch the Wheel of Years to you guys. Okay. Got it. I'm excited. So this is all for next time. So so we're not even getting to spoons this episode. The cliffhanger I was promised. Oh last my time. god! We forgot <laughs> spoons again. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna fuck. write that in my go. notes. So we're it's next time. It's definitely. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm noting oh, these things here. Right now. I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. It's yes. real fast. Uh, what's the biggest problem you have with a spoon, Gavin? God, duh. I don't know. I don't have a lot of problems with spoons. <laughs> they don't. They're not sized specifically for your mouth. Everybody, <laughs> mouths, Gavin. <laughs> mouths are like feet and boobs. They come in all different sizes. But what if we start a revolutionary business that measures your particular mouth and then designs the perfectly sized and shaped spoon for your specific needs? Well, when uh, I, I eat, I, 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 I maybe use up 20% of the capacity of my mouth per well, bite. Otherwise, what, I wouldn't be able to swallow. Jeff came in with some Rosa Parks quotes. I, I, I don't know where, the, 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 where this started was, uh, what is a bite? Yes. Sorry, like I was what? just writing that. You, this is just marketing material I'd written down. What is a bite? Yeah, how, how do you like define, because we're talking about if you have a foot long sandwich, how yeah. many sandwiches could you put on a foot long? And I think you need at least one bite worth amount. So what is a bite? Is a bite the entirety of your mouth? I don't think it is. I think that's a no. mouthful. I think that's how a many different... sandwiches are on a, can you put on a foot long? Yeah. So you know how there are different types of sandwiches? Yeah. Do you understand that as an idea? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a foot long is a foot long piece of bread. And so the question was, how many different types of sandwich could you make within that foot long? Yeah. Like this is an Italian sub at this portion. And then this portion is regulation sandwich. And then this portion is pastrami. And then this portion is, I don't know. We should have wrapped the cheese. show up. Gavin's not, there's no oxygen going on over there. He's got a deficiency. <laughs> well, it's, like the, uh, it's like the infinity pizza, but in foot long form. Sure, but it was just how many could you have? Like, could you have 12 sandwiches in one foot long? So that, that'd be basically inch strips of filling. So, yeah, but you'd yeah. have to, that was the question of, like, how much filling is required for each sandwich to be unique. And we determined the measurement would be a mouthful, but then it becomes a whole question of, well, how much is a mouthful? Right. Which is the, the, the real dilemma. I, my sort of general meter of measurement is it is less than your mouth being full, but more than when you take a bite of somebody else's item that you're like just getting a try of. You like yes, it's, take that tiny little bite. It's more than when you're trying somebody else's food, but less than your whole mouth. And it's less, and it's, a, it's a comfortable amount. Wait, so when you try the people's food, you take a smaller bite than normal? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Huh. What? You don't? You just take a normal, what you would have, typically? No, I try, I try to take as much in my mouth as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> uh hey nick can we can i get that clipped for the break show <laughs> yeah i just I try to get put as Damn much it. of that in my mouth as possible if you, yeah i appreciate that thanks man uh so anyway somehow we got to a spoon and just how spoons how it's there's different sizes for everything bras shoes gloves underwear pants but we all have to use the same fucking size spoons although we're not the same size people yeah, different mouths. Everybody's different got a sizes. different mouth. Everyone has a different social etiquette. Maybe your, maybe my mouth is deeper than your mouth. Maybe you have a shallow, wide mouth. Therefore, you need a less oval spoon and a more shallow, wide spoon. And we, when we develop the technology to measure a to measure your mouth, then we can determine the perfect spoon size for you. And then you have that spoon for the rest of your life. It, it doesn't work for anybody else. It only works for you, Gavin, because it's, it's designed specifically for your mouth and mind. So yeah. here's what I'm immediately thinking we should do. 
I will put a balloon in your mouth. <laughs> and then out of the end of your mouth will be the little balloon nozzle. And I'll just inflate it. That seems and like when it stops, a terrible plan. <laughs> when it stops, I'll pull the balloon out. And that's what do you mean the when size it of the spoon. stops. It'll keep going until it pops. No, but that will be the size. That will be the size of the balloon. <laughs> it won't. It won't keep going. Or the size of your mouth, though. It will be the size of your mouth. I can't pump more air into the balloon than will fit. I I think that balloon is gonna find additional holes. It's gonna create space. Uh, this sounds like how you die. Are you saying that if I cupped my hand around a deflated balloon and you blew it up, it would open my hands? Yeah, it would. Wouldn't it? <laughs> I think the problem here, I disagree with, with where Andrew's going with it. I do think it's a good way to measure mouth size, but I think the it's problem- It's a terrible way. It, it may provide on, it, but it's a terrible- Hold ter on. Sorry. The Go problem ahead. is when you pull it out, it's going to assume its natural shape again. It won't maintain the integrity of the shape that it's filled to in your mouth. And I think that, so, you, so you're going to lose like your depth and your height and your width. It's just going to turn back into an oval. You know what I mean? Uh, but if you yeah. want to put a balloon in my mouth and blow it up, I'm all about that. I, well, I think we'll definitely get volume. We might not get an accurate 3D map. We'll, we'll get volume. get volume. And that's a place to start. That's a data set we need. <laughs> we can then displace water with the air-filled balloon to see the volume of your mouth. Nick, could you also pull that thing that Jeff said about pulling, pulling out of things? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. I think <laughs> that's, that's a great one, too, with what Gavin that's said. Fine. I think you got some real. Really fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that'll do it for this episode of Fake Face. Um, <laughs> Gonna let we make it out. Yeah, I thought um, this picture from Robin Swan was really good, too. Great sandwich. Oh, that was delicious. To put, interesting to put the pesto on top of the cheese and the ham. Dude, um, that's you a lot check of out, tomato. I like you wanna that. You want to check out some more stuff, uh, facepod.com is where you can go check us out. Check us out on YouTube also. Wow, really great stuff from uh, Three Insane Men. Congratulations. <laughs> if we do the balloon thing, I can't be there because I'm going to witness a death. Someone's yeah, going to choke not. on a balloon and die. Mean? And I, I refuse no, to be there for that. Yes. No, no, no. Hey, yes, that's 100%. Of all the things that we do, that's the thing how somebody dies. Blow 100%. Up yes, I agree. Yeah, right, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so okay. thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. What if I use a pump? What if you have to blow it with <laughs> your mouth? The pump? That, <laughs> what if you have to manually blow the balloon up in my mouth? What do you mean? <laughs> well, like the nozzle's sticking out, right? You have to blow it up like you'd blow a balloon. That's what I was suggesting. Oh, mouth to mouth? Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to use some sort of a tube or something. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm even more gonna, on board. That's why I said it would look like we were making out. Oh, yeah, let's fucking get to it, dude. Are you, are you going to wear a shirt while you do it? Uh, Maybe a button up. Do I have to? <laughs> All right, bye. I'm writing... <laughs> This is the smut is just writing itself at this point. <laughs> hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. No more animals. It's time to open our own franchise. Gavin explains the Mandelbrot fractal. Andrew has a ball problem. What do you do on a flight with no phone? The GTA 6 trailer is out. The biggest break shit pull ever. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>